get under the hood of APRA for a bit? Firstly, how does APRA make money? And then second, what are the core KPIs of APRA? Oh, God, this is like a interview um, <laughs> <laughs> for my job. <laughs> um, so, so in terms of APRA's remit, it's, it's very simple. You know, we are a, a, mem- a member-based association. Sometimes people think we're government and we're set up by somebody else, but we're not. We were set up by songwriters and composers and music publishers to administer certain rights for them. We've been around since 1926, so we're five years off being 100 years old as an organisation. 1926 is when radio started in Australia, so that's why we became relevant. Music was suddenly being exploited uh, beyond what a songwriter or composer could control. Uh, Our members assign particular rights to us and we administer those rights locally and globally. What does administer rights mean? So when you wrote a song and you become a member of APRA, you assign your public performance communication rights in that song to us and we then take over collecting, putting licences in place and collecting royalties on your behalf. So rather than you having to go to every nightclub and small business and cinema and um, Spotify and everybody else who you think is using your music, we do that on your behalf. But we do that globally. So when you're picked up on UK radio, our affiliate in the UK, PRS, has a license in place with the radio station. They collect the money, they pay it back to us. So the idea of the collecting societies is to create this global infrastructure where money is collected domestically and then returned to the relevant affiliate association. So that's broadly how it works. And the licenses are, are tailored depending on the use of the music and the, the, the value of the license is really um, assessed on a hierarchical basis in the sense of how important is music to that business. So obviously what a nightclub pays us is a lot more than what a hairdresser would pay us. Uh, so that's the basis for the money coming into the business. And um, as I said earlier, you know, we're sort of sitting around the 450 to $500 million mark as a business. Um, so you're Sorry, a, is that gross money in or is that the is that your clip of the money that comes in? That's gross money coming in. Yeah. Then, uh, uh, so you've got your members assigning the rights to you. You've got your license revenue coming in the door. We have a range of distribution processes based on where does the money come from? What data can we get in order to work out the distribution? We deduct the running costs of the organisation and that becomes your net distributable revenue. So in any, our um, expenses fluctuate from year to year. But to give you an idea, we, we look at the range of our expenses sitting in the you know, 12 to 14% range, our overall operating costs. So that includes IT, staff, everything has to fit within that, within that sort of range. And, and obviously the board and our membership keep a very close watch on that. We're very, very... Um, transparent to our members as an operation. We're subject to a voluntary code of conduct. We're subject to an authorization from the ACCC. So quite rightly, we have a lot of people looking at our operation and, and what we do. Does that mean that at a high level, it's safe to assume that if you are, if you're collecting money that APRA is, is giving you as an art, as a songwriter, about 14% of that revenue is um, being, is APRA's fee? Is that right? Yeah, and, and again, it sort of it, that fluctuates, yeah. um, and that's what we call our expense to revenue ratio. So some some parts of our business, no surprise, it's it, it costs you more money to collect and distribute the money than in other areas. But the overall expense to revenue ratio is between twelve and fourteen percent. COVID context, not great. Obviously, your revenue is massively down. Um, we had to look at our operation last year. We very, very sadly had to let 50 people go. So we're not immune from the commercial realities that's, that are happening in the world and, and we similarly have to scale our operation.